Welcome back to this week's episode of Azentuary. It's been a couple weeks, but we're ready to jump right back in. So, you guys were in the bedchambers, resting, and then walking out back into the hallway you came through. Uh, That's Barry right. had just we're gotten here. hit with some lightning. Yep. You have your magical crystals, you've got your... Uh, magic book that you had or maybe you left that behind uh but generally speaking we're in this giant room it is as you walk through the door out of the sleeping chamber you know it's 20 feet wide 30 feet tall there's the long corridor that goes to the west in front of you for 100 something feet and then there's a long corridor that goes to the north to your right and that goes up for 100 something feet and you can see way up there there's a couple of like branches and other things going on if you go that way or you can go back the way you came and there was other rooms you hadn't gone to there either uh me thinking i think i've decided i need a vacation uh <laughs> breaking the fourth wall we just had a vacation we're just now getting back from vacation no 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 fourth wall just i i need a vacation like i right stares at the screaming okay. ceiling wondering what the fourth wall is is that the fourth wall i petition for grimmel to have a vacation <laughs> why do I, you care never mind then, i don't want it if you want it then you'd be gone <laughs> Let's for that. Send... My vacation is annoying you now. Let's send Grimmel on a vacation to an active volcano. That sounds like a great idea. Screw you, I have a hungle with a beach home there. Well, screw you. <laughs> this is unacceptable. I can't believe it. I just asked for a vacation and suddenly people want me dead. I didn't say I wanted you dead. I just said an active volcano would be a good place. Uh-huh, and what do you imagine I'll do at an active volcano? Swim in lava in your stone form? I don't know, that sounds like fun. Yeah, do you know what lava is? <laughs> Molten stone? Yeah. How do you think that's gonna go? Make sweet rolls? Yeah, there you go, make sweet rolls in the active volcano. I don't know, get some lava rocks, make a bracelet, put essential oils on it, you know? This has, only, con this has only confirmed the fact that I need a vacation. You all are insufferable. Uh, okay, uh, calm down there, guys. Uh, before any of us can go on vacation, uh, we must uh, complete this quest first. Remember? Says who? We getting paid in magical armor, and we have not found magical armor yet, so... Uh, complete quest, and then we can talk about, you know, vacation. You know, that's the other thing that's kind of dawned on me, is that um, magical armor is usually not uh, grimmel sized So what on earth do I get out of this? I mean, Barry, you probably get the most out of this. I mean, normal, medium-sized creature items, those are right up your alley. What about me? Maybe it's what magical and it warm fits. Well, I think it could be- uh, That's, that's an, being optimistic and that's something that I'm highly against. You can sell magical yeah, that armor checks out. Mm, that's gonna be dumb. You guys are gonna want it. Well, hopefully we get enough magical armor for everybody. Uh, sure. <laughs> There's that optimism again. It makes my skin crawl. <laughs> All right, uh, Grimmel, are, are you done? You done uh, whining yet? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we will get you. Seems statistically unlikely that we would get enough armor for everyone. Yeah, see, exactly. Thank you, Poplar. Well, Blood elbows. Uh, Foxglove says, By the way, what does statistically mean? <laughs> it's something to do with math. Ah. Uh, you know what that is. And book learning. Magical scribblings. Yeah. It comes from book. That was an awesome cutout. <laughs> it was. I thought it was just me. <laughs> no, it went All to right. everyone. I'm some boo. Uh, All okay. right, where are you going? We don't know yet. 
<laughs> Grimmel distracted us with his uh, rant. I, it wasn't going to be a rant. I just said I want a vacation. Foxglove was the one who piped up. <laughs> I say we get to the nunnery. The nunnery? Uh, they have yeah, I heard somebody here? say that once. He's yes, going to get back in the habit. Oh my god. Uh, me not think there are nuns down here, Poplart. If there were, they'd be dead. Hopefully. Uh, most likely. All right, anyway. Are you saying there are none? Yes, I am saying there are none nuns. <laughs> puns, puns, puns. Makes my ear feel numb. Right? Do All right, have anyway. No other ways, there are none. Where shall we go, brave companions? Oh, wow, wow. When do we get more companions with us? Uh, we did not to get too many more. We just, you know, brave, com you know, companions. More than one. There are more than one of us. So that makes a compa uh, us companions. I don't know. You said brave companions, and I don't think we've ever exhibited any particular bravery at any stage. Oh, scores of monsters have died on our blades. I think that makes us be brave. <laughs> yes. It was more like a, a mere uh, product of happenstance to me, but hey, I guess to each his own an interpretation. <laughs> uh, Poplar, if you did not have some measure of bravery, uh, you'd be still in fairyland and, and being like a, a cobbler or maybe making cookies. Or toys. I'm pretty sure that wasn't an option when they kicked me out, but uh, yeah, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> or you would be in this realm making cookies or shoes or toys. That's an option? Sure. I mean, anything's an option, really. We just got the short end of the stick. I mean, Why didn't you've anybody accumulated tell enough me? shinies by now. <laughs> Yes, you could probably open your own shop and everything. Well, I know what I'm doing as soon as we get back to the surface. <laughs> what is that? Apart takes out a sweet roll and mun starts munching on it and says, Yeah, I'll see. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Freya. Why is that the scariest thing we've encountered thus far in our journey? <laughs> I give it three months, and then Poplart will be broke, and he'll be adventuring again to raise more cash. All I'd right. Say it would be anyway, a lot brave less companion. than three months. <laughs> say what? I say I would give it more like a three days at most, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which way do we go? Um, pick one. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pick the corridor that go to the right that goes 100 feet, and then there's more branchings. Well, well, I just threw it's over 100. I just didn't want to actually count out the squares. So you go walking up that way, and it begins to widen out. The hallway gets up to be about 40 feet wide, still about 30 feet tall, as it's kind of reaching its widest part and continues in kind of a long hall another 60 feet in front of you. There is a double door immediately to your left and another double door to your right, but the one on the right is flanked by a column on each side that is covered in lidless eyes. Hmm. Uh, me feel like somebody is watching us. There is also a continuing hallway to the north where it narrows back down to only be 20 feet wide at the end of this section. It's open and it looks like it bends to the left or to the west about another 40 feet ahead. Okay. Let's see. Me kind of uh, curious about the doors with the columns in the eyes. Uh... Me, me going to take a uh, copper coin out of pocket and 
kind of uh, flick it at one of the columns that have the littlest eyes on it. Okay. Are you trying to hit it or just see if they like yes. move to watch it? Uh, move to watch it or shoot it with, you know, laser beams or something like that. All right. Uh, you, you're like, hmm. I heard this once in a story that never ended. And you flick the coin and it does not get shot by any laser beams or anything. In fact, it just kind of hits the eye and then falls to the ground. There doesn't appear to be any effect. They appear to be just carved stone. Okay. All right. Uh, Flight follows suit and throws a coin as well, just because he follow he does what Barry does. All right, you do the same thing. It clinks against it and then falls to the ground. It is definitely just stone. Ah, oh, he okay. showed those eyes, didn't we, Barry? No. Uh, yes. Uh, now maybe me think that quite possibly this could be meeting place of one of those uh, secret societies you hear about. Never heard about any secret society. It's because they're a secret. How do you know about it? I mean, obviously, they must not be that secret. Well, you know, me know stuff. Me, me hear things in different bars and taverns and, you know, pillow talk uh, in all my in all me adventures. Applight looks at the pillow in his bedroll and is like, this talks? <laughs> uh, no, Poplar, that is a uh, figure of speech. It just means, uh, you know, usually when uh, the two beings uh, have intimate relations, afterwards they like to talk. And sometimes things get said. But how do you know about it? Yeah, Mia has experienced this. I doubt it. <clears throat> I get it. We're telling fables now. <laughs> All right, whatever, Poplar. It's never mind. Uh... <laughs> All right. Uh... Hmm. Is there any other way forward? I mean, we can go forward, but me kind of want to go through these double doors on right. So well, you can open them up. Go through them. <laughs> well, I guess uh, first me will investigate to see if there are, if the, there are any traps or anything. Okay. Me check for traps. Sure, that will go. So oh far. well. Uh, me get five because of course me do. Yep. You take a look. You're like, looks fine to me. Of course. All right. Me try to open door carefully and just peek through it. Me open door just to crack and peek through. All right. You open a crack and peek through. As the light from the room you're in uh, goes into the darkness, you can see it, it, there's about 10 feet of a landing and then there appears to be stairs, but you can't see anything else from this vantage point. Oh, stairs. All right. Uh, me open door farther all right as you push the door open a little more light comes in and you can see it for sure is a landing about uh, 20 feet wide you know where these double doors could both be swung open to allow passage of something large to come through and it goes out about 10 feet and then the stairway just descends hundreds of feet like beyond the realm of your vision with the assisted light with dark vision, you cannot see the end of this stairway descending into darkness. Ugh, going down deeper. Okay. I mean, if anywhere is going to have magic armor, it's probably down deeper. All right. Down into the dungeon we go. I we go downstairs. Question, I have extended dark vision. Does that help here? No, it's just a seriously long, like, beyond the extent of your vision. Like, that's how long the stairs are. Yeah, all right. Yeah, no, it's, it's just... Long? I was thinking more like 240 feet long. All right. Mm 
And all, all right. right, we go downstairs. Okay. Uh, boom. All right. After quite a long, long descent, you find yourself in a room. I'm trying to think of how to describe this. Uh, four stone pillars support a 35 foot high vaulted ceiling strung with cobwebs. Uh, there's statues uh, on each side of a door to the north and the south. There's a passage due to the east. There are what look like mine carts also near that passageway to the east. Uh, they're made of a uh, type of corroded I iron that appears to have not been touched or taken care of in many, many years. Mm. Interesting. All right, which walls did you say statues were on? Uh, there are statues north and to the north and the south, and they are 12 feet tall, and they look like a, a scowling old wizard wearing a robe, and the robe is covered with the same lidless eyes as the columns up above. Oh, yes. Got it. And then you say passages going out east and west. Uh, so you came from. So in terms of this room, uh, you came from the west. There are doors north and south, or the passages north and south between the statues, and a passage to the east. Got it. Hmm. And. Uh... Where are the, are the mine carts? Kind of, are they in the east passage, or are they just in the middle? Yes, of the, room? the mine mine carts flank the east passage. Here, all right. Well, my first instinct would be to uh, check out east passage, but um, I would think it'd be more likely that our final objectives would either be north or south. Uh, what do you guys think? I mean... A direction is a direction. As part of my vacation, I've decided not to make any decisions. Uh, we are not on vacation yet. Says you! <laughs> right is always right. I feel like I was even more helpful than Fox Club was. Hey! <laughs> I at least gave somewhat of a suggestion. Eric, so pick a direction, any direction. The Grimmel is mentally checked out. Knowing us, we'll probably go every way anyway, so just pick one for now. We'll do the other ones later. All right. I guess uh, we go south. All right. You go to the south. Sorry, I need to read something really quick. I didn't expect you guys to be here. Oh, no. Reading? <laughs> Reading's never good. <laughs> All right, as you walk to the south, all of a sudden, there's a bright flash of white as you hear a booming voice uh, that screams... Teleported! And you find yourself in another location. I just have to figure out what location that is. Wow, great. <laughs> oh, okay. I just have to roll. And then, okay, locate that number on the map. Oh, very nice. Yeah, it's pretty well laid out. It's just a, uh, there it is. All right. You find yourself in a hallway. You are currently staring. Let's see, you, you, you 
portal in looking the direction that you, you know, were when you were walking, which is south. So you are staring at a wall. As you look to your left, you see a passage that goes about 50 feet down and then turns to the north. And there's, as you continue to look, spinning to your left, there's a passage almost due north of you as well that appears to go up into some kind of a room. Uh, what is off to our right? To your right, as you look that way, is a dead end. Okay. All right, well, I guess we go left. Yeah, but do you want to go left or left left? Like, do you want to go east and then north or just north? Oh, okay. Uh, I, okay, let's go just north is into the room, right? Yeah, because there's a passage about, oh, one, two, three, four, fifty feet, and then it enters a, a room. Okay. Got it. Uh, let us check out room. All right. You en- you approach a oval chamber with a ten foot high ceiling. Standing against the east wall is a stone statue of a young gold dragon on stone rollers. The dragon's mouth is agape, teeth barred, and its wings are folded in tight. Well, that doesn't look ominous. On rollers with mouth agape, huh? Is that only thing in this room? Uh, there is uh, what appears to be a passage out the west side. Kind uh, of the narrow part of this oval. Okay. Uh... Me going to go look at Dragon real close. Okay. Uh, so me going to look at Open Mouth. Does it look like uh, something needs to be put in mouth? Uh, roll for an investigation. Or perception. You can do a perception roll. You're trying to figure this out. Okay. Uh, me get three. Uh, you can't tell. You're like, eh, not really anything here. Of course. Is whenever I need. Um. All right. Uh, me going to examine rollers. Okay, you look at, and they appear sturdy, well-maintained. Uh, like they could roll anywhere. Like it'd be really easy to push it. But they also, are, they're not uh, uh, whirly, I guess. You could tell that they're... Uh, how can I say this? Like they only work, they only work one direction. You know, yeah, you, it's not... meant to be pushed forward, not not all over the place. Yeah, they they only go forward and back. They don't swivel. Correct. Okay. I'll investigate the mouth. All right. Grimmel is interested in the mouth. Okay. So roll a five. (laughs) It's a mouth. (laughs) Pristine. Worksmanship. Wow. Other uninteresting things. This mouth is stupid. Uh, so which way are wheels facing? So if I, you know, try to move dragon, am I pulling it away from wall? You would be pulling it away from the wall towards the passage on the west side. All right. Uh, up like flies uh, up and sits on top of the dragon. Okay. <laughs> Barry, right. what were you saying? Uh, me going to. Pull dragon forward about three feet to see if anything happens. Uh, you find that it actually rolls surprisingly easily. It's heavy, but it moves. Okay. Uh, is anything behind dragon when it's me pull dragon out of way? I don't believe so. Let me double check. Uh, 
Uh, no. Okay. All right. That's kind of what to me was thinking. All right. Uh, me going to leave Dragon for the moment and then go uh, down and investigate West Corridor. All right. As you walk into the West Corridor, you all of a sudden hear that booming voice yell, Teleported! And you find yourself... Okay. In a corner of a hallway, there is a path to your south and a path to the west. Alright, listen, Mr. Booming voice. I don't know what you're up to, but we have an agenda, kind of, so I can finally get out of here and get away from these bozos. So if you would kindly stop yelling, teleported, I would gladly not rip your face. Uh, me think okay. this is like automatic automatic magic thing. Uh, they're a grimmel. Yeah, but somebody's doing it, or somebody set it up. Death. Just death. I wish death upon why it, this is happening, because it's just slowing us down all the more. Maybe the people that set it up were teleported. Hope so. Taste of their own medicine. Alright, well, uh, me going to, to go south. Alright, you go to the south and find after about... 40 feet of walking that it turns to the west it then goes you can you reach a junction where you can either continue going west and then it turns north or you can turn to the south all right uh me going to go south all right you go to the south and find that it curves around to the east and then north again and there is a, you can see there's two T-junctions here. You can either continue going north, or there are two doors on the east spaced about 20 feet apart. Hmm. Yeah, I... Do you have an opinion, Grimmel? No. All right. This place sucks. It's boring door after boring door. Uh, me going to try first door. Alright. The door to this room is engraved with a large rune, while the door frame is carved with a leering, with leering dwarven skulls. Oh, okay. Uh, Grimmel, can you read this rune here? Try. It was the invocation eyes of rune keeper. Alright. You use that. And you write, you're able to discern that it is the dwarven symbol of death. Oh, okay. I'd say we probably shouldn't enter this door. Yeah, probably, probably not. All right. Uh, me going to look at other door next door. Right. This door has a different symbol on it and a small uh, triangular hole in the bottom. Ah, uh, Grimmel, what does the second symbol say? I will read it. I you recognize that this is a symbol. At first, you you read it as life, but then you don't feel that's quite right. And it's it, there's something else. The triangle modifies it to where it means burst of life. <laughs> huh. Me wonder if maybe this some sort of um like like a resurrection chamber. Uh, me going to open this door. All right. You push the door open, revealing a you know, 
decently sized like 30 by 30 room beyond inside there are six dwarf skeletons performing some type of tasks and like tending to uh sarcophagi in here there are, are three of them total and what looks like kind of a a slit opening in the back wall with a track connected to it it's too skinny for anyone to fit inside you know only maybe an inch or two wide uh you talking about what? the slit yes the slit is only about an inch too wide at the back of the room there appears to be also as you kind of look around and watch these skeletons work you see there are various uh tools uh around like um straps and um gloves and stuff things that are look very old and somewhat decayed but definitely are in here with them oh, interesting okay up it says uh that looks interesting back there he flies over towards the slit uh, uh yeah yeah you fly in the, the skeletons don't seem to really uh to really care they they kind of watch you fly over there um yeah oh Is there any the light skeletons are actually moving yeah they're just kind of milling around doing their thing they don't they ignore you but is there any yeah. light or anything coming from this point no there is not you can't see anything you look down inside and you just see a long tunnel Uplart flies inside you can't fit how big is it about two inches at most wide Uplart only needs one inch really a passage any any hole at least one inch big he can slip like slide through wow that is terrifying all right yeah you slide in and disappear to your party and after a little while you find yourself in a room that has like a track on it that goes out and you see oh about three and a half foot tall flat they look it looks like parchment but it's like an anatomical you know cross section of someone um as if you cut a say like a half inch out of their entire body through their nose so you can like see their profile and their brain and everything Uplight just says this nope <laughs> turns around and goes back to the party okay you gotta report what he saw all right uh, so he I found reports slushes. you guys Uh, meanwhile, uh, me, uh, investigating, uh, Slit, and, uh, uh, me wondering if maybe me can pull, if this is some kind of door that slides on tracks. So me hook fingers and, and Slit and try to pull. Uh, you try to pull and you find that nothing moves. It's definitely a solid wall. It's just a, an area of access. Darn. Uh, then what are the me investigate the tracks okay it's just a simple track um, imagine like a piece of unistrut that's attached to the ceiling oh okay And you've noticed after you do your investigation, you tend to turn back around and you see that the skeletons have moved in the room around the central table and are pointing at it. One of them is beckoning you to lay down on it. Uh. Okay. All right. Let us see where this goes. Uh, me go and lay down on table. Wow. I didn't think he'd actually do it. Yeah, me neither. Uh, all right. As you lay down, they work around you. Uh, they start like, um, well, kind of like there's a, a rag. It looks like a cloth made of like spider silk, and they start polishing your armor down the middle 
and um, you know, like knocking off dirt, making your look all clean, and then they, um, you see two of them reach down and they pull up uh, what looks like some kind of a like a cuff that's part of the table, and it like locks in your arms and your legs, and then the one of them up front just kind of carefully uh, adjusts your adjusts your helmet to perfect center, and then pulls up a couple of posts that hold you. And you hear a, a kind of a pleasant female voice uh, just out of the air. It says, Welcome, adventurer. Thank you for choosing to join us in this burst of life. Your memories, your essence, all that you are will be preserved for all time, for giving wisdom to future generations. It is uh, an honor. Be- Come with us. Yeah, me start laughing really, really loud and long, and uh, uh, me saying, uh, uh, you pick wrong guy. Me have no wisdom. Uh, Me have no smarts. Uh, Me not good candidate. Me would uh, offer nothing to you. Uh, You best let me go, or there's a good good possibility I might make you dumber. (laughs) Well, there's no one there to listen. As you suddenly hear a whirring of uh, something spinning up, and as you look down, you see two spinning blades start moving their way towards your crotch area. Of course. Uh, I'll pull out my giant flaming axe and just try and smack the blades away. (laughs) Or maybe you could cut me chains. Nah, smack the blades away. I act fast, and this is how I act fast. Also, I have a okay, giant so remember, flaming axe. Do you want me to try to s- break your chains with it near your hands? <laughs> That'd be even more dumb. Actually, remember the axe is so heavy you can't really wield it, so you have to just like open up your item of holding and kind of drop it on stuff. <laughs> That's dumb. So maybe you just drop the drop the axe it. on the blades. <laughs> Fine, I'll fly up over the blades and drop the axe on them. Alright, the axe falls straight to the ground, smashing into the blades, and you see the skeletons all throw up their arms, freaking out, and they run over and start, like, picking up pieces, and you see two of them, like, first one tries to pick up the axe, then two of them try to pick it up, and then they all kind of group together, and four of them, they kind of drag it, off to the side and drop it on the ground and go to work st- starting to repair the uh, the blades. Yeah. Meanwhile, I me- feel bad. It's not their fault you weren't an idiot. Uh, me try to break chains. Uh, yeah, strange me, thinking, me think they must be kind of rusty. Well, it's more of strapping, but yeah, go ahead and give me a strength roll. Is it like leather strapping? I, some type of magical strapping. It's fantasy. Oh. Whatever works. Uh, Eleven. We wish we could actually roll something above a ten. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't get out. You're struggling and moving. Um, party, do you want to maybe assist him or just what are you doing? I did my job. Someone else help. Is there a lat? Is there an obvious latch anywhere? No, there's not. Uh, Poplar goes and tries to cut the straps. Okay. Uh, give me a quick sleight of hand. Um, okay, let's see if it gets over 10 base. All right, so that's a 25, or 26. Sleight of hand. Yeah, you definitely slip your blade in and pop Barry's wrist free. Poi right. says, "So, uh, can roll well. good bed or or not good bed? Doesn't seem very welcoming." Uh, no, this is bad. Uh, Pop Larch, can you uh, uh, cut other straps away, please? Yeah. So, are you cutting other straps away? Uh, oh, oh, I mean, 
I, I will. I, I, you just asked me if I could. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Let me get right on that. <laughs> uh, you want individual rolls for each? No. You, you, you can do it. You're fine. Oh, Poplar, the uh, sleight of hand is one of his chosen traits, so it's impossible for me to roll less than 10. Yeah, I, you're, you can do it. You can get him out. It's fine. Do -do 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 -do. He has a little twirl of his dagger and puts it back in the sheath. You're welcome, but you should really work on your word choice. Uh, it would help if you weren't so literal, but thank you, Poplar, for releasing me. By the way, the minute that he gets the last uh, uh, thing cut, I roll off the table. Sounds like a smart awesome. idea. I don't know why you had to insult me by calling me a book. I I didn't call you a book. Yeah, you did. You said don't be literal. Uh, <laughs> different kind of literal there, Poplart. Your common tongue is so confusing sometimes. Uh... Only to you, Poplar. The rest of us get get along just fine. Yeah, you stupid physical planers. Growing up with this stuff since birth. I don't appreciate the trials and tribulations of second language learners like myself. Non-native speakers. Well, I guess me can kind of understand, you know, whenever me try to, you know, speak me second language. It's just not the same. All right. Anyway. So, apparently, Burst of Life is is no bueno. Yeah, I didn't think it was. <laughs> kind of sounded ominous. All right. So, I guess uh, if we can't get through Slit, then uh, to see what the... I mean... I'm guessing Poplar took told us what was in the other room. Yeah. Okay. Uh, me, me leave this room. Okay. You're back in the hallway, and you can either go south the way you came or continue north. Uh, the passage goes on for a bit, and it looks like it turns to the west. Okay. Uh... Yeah. All right. Me super. Me really want to see what behind death door because you know burst of light was burst of life was not truly really what it was saying. So, uh, me think that maybe uh, death may also not be quite what it's saying. But uh, me think uh, discretion better part of valor. So me going to ignore death room right now and just head okay. north. I was gonna say because burst of life isn't exactly um, a well-earned fra learned phrase in common. Uh, so it would make sense that there would be some questions about that. Uh, death, I feel like, is pretty final. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've come back from death multiple times at this point. Yeah, but I feel like our luck's got to run out at some point. <laughs> True. All right. Anyway, so me go to... Corridor north and then turn west. All right. The westward passage uh, goes for a few feet and then there's a totally broken down, like barely on its hinges door that as you approach just kind of collapses into nothingness. The room beyond is relatively square, at least on the side you enter. But the air is hot and dry. About 30 feet from the entrance is a crumbling ledge overlooking a great chasm brightly lit by a bubbling pool of lava 30 feet below. As you look out over this vast chasm, you see there's what appears to be a spectral bridge spanning from like one side to another. Like There are rooms you can just barely make out the outlines of, but they are hundreds of feet from your location across this chasm area. As you turn and look around, you see what's left of the existing floor is 
covered with corroded fragments of dwarf-sized chainmail and plate armor. And embedded in the middle of the south wall is what looks kind of like a stone arch, but there's at least a hundred little jigsaw pieces that would have to be put back together to rebuild it. Uh, to rebuild arch? Yeah. So, but does this arch actually kind of, does it, is it lead out or is it just like a... Oh, it just... It's just like a like a mosaic that's been broken off the wall and shattered to the ground. Oh, okay. I like doing puzzles. Uh, do you want to give this one a go, Poplart? Sure, why not? I don't know how I would interpret if I could actually do that or not. Uh, let's, let's see. I'm trying to think. How about this? First do, give me an Arcana check. Arcana. Uh, be in the... Hey. Three. Um, yeah, you're, you're just looking at it like, well, it's definitely not magical. So let's see. Maybe there's something else I can do. And maybe do a... insight check <laughs> trying to think of what Eight. might be best for this. Eight, you said? Yes. Yeah, you you play with it for a little while and you just kind of smash some pieces together, but you just eventually give up. You're like, I have no idea. Doesn't give up. He stands up, dusts his hands and says, ah, perfect. Ta-da! Wow. Uh, me wow, going to help Pop Lart. And uh, me going to do my own insight check. Okay. He's in the way. No. Uh, me just got napped. Okay, you look at it and you're like, well, I mean, it's just an arch. You could just start putting stuff together like this and you start clicking together pieces as you kind of climb up the wall and you're like, see, Pop Light, it makes a pretty picture. Eh, I like my way better. What is it a picture of? Well, it's just an arch. Like, you're you're literally, like, imagine, say, the St. Louis Arch, but, like, it's a puzzle of that and you're just putting the puzzle pieces together on the wall. Oh, I thought maybe once I completed it, it would actually do something or would say something or anything along those lines. Oh, it yeah, it will. I mean, yeah, okay. So you, you continue to work and you, you work yourself away and you complete the whole thing. And uh, let's see. As you click the, the final piece into position. Let's see. There's a kind of a a warpy look that goes across the wall, almost like it turns to become like liquidy. Harry, you broke it. Uh, no, me guessing this is a magic portal to someplace else. Oh, yeah, that 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 could probably make sense too. Uh. Hmm. Uh. So this. this uh. Hmm. So this dwarven armor. Are there any like shields or like helmets or something laying around? Ah, uh, it's mostly just pieces of like plate mail, rings that have been ripped out of, uh, chain mail, stuff like that. Any broken weapons like swords or axe axe blades? Uh, sure. How about a sword that's been split completely down the middle in half? It's like looks like a toothpick for you. Okay. Uh, uh me going to investigate sword 
uh, look at it and see what kind of uh, metal it is made out of. Or actually, no, me just going to take cloth and rub it on sword to see if it polishes up. Uh, it's pretty rusted and and dirty. Uh, it'll polish oh. a bit, but you know you're smearing rust around. Okay, so it's not going to polish to a mirror brightness. It's not like I'm working no. with mithril or anything. All right. Definitely, uh, you do have that piece of mithril with you. Uh, I also have. We also have a mirror with us. I don't know about a mirror, but I know you have two chunks of mithril. Oh, okay. Are they shiny, or is it yes. just like I think we have pellets? No, I think we decided last game that it was shiny. Okay. Well, first, me going to uh, chuck broken sword piece uh, at a portal to see what happens. All right, you see a little bloop as it kind of disappears through the wall in a classic, like, late 90s, early CGI portal effect. Okay. <sighs> I mean, I've jumped through worse. <laughs> All right, uh, I guess uh, be going to uh, just uh, stick head through portal. All right, you stick your head through the portal and I think find yourself in a, or find yourself looking into a darkened cavern. Looks like rough. Yeah, rough earth. Okay. Yep. All right, me pull head back out of portal. Okay. Uh, me turn to companions and say, yeah, it looks like it goes into some big, huge cave. And any point on is a point on, isn't it? Well, but we have a choice. We can either go into rough cave or we can go across ghost bridge over there and see what's on the other side where those other rooms are i guess the ghost bridge might be a good idea this is a guaranteed way forward out of here so we might as well explore what's here before moving on okay especially if we're trying to find this mithril uh me was also thinking same thing all right uh let me take other half of Broken Sword and and take it over to where Ghost Bridge is and kind of chuck it onto Bridge to see if, you know, it lands on Bridge or just goes straight through Bridge. Well, let's see. The Ghost Bridge, the closest point is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. going to be a good, like, 80-foot huck of that chunk of sword, so I'll need you to make a oh man would be a good throw check athletic like strength check check yeah sure give me a good strength check see how if you can really chuck that thing that far so it's like 80 feet across you know to the it's just 80 feet of empty chasm to just get to the edge of the bridge oh yeah i thought it spanned yeah. i thought it spanned it the does whole from thing it does from two rooms that are you are looking like you're in an observation room and you can see the two rooms across the chasm from you so if you're in one it's like you're uh oh man it's like you're on i5 watching the gondola thing go back and forth from ohsu you know you can see the two destination points but you can't get to it from where you're at Oh, okay. All right. I thought that the room we were in. The chest. Oh, you can. If, and... it, nope. It's a big, giant open area. If you jumped off the edge, you'd fall 30 feet down into lava and then have an 80 foot track over to where the bridge is. Got it. Okay. 
It's over. Yeah, I don't so. recommend it. You'd probably die, and it would hurt the entire time. All right, I misunderstood. So there's there's basically no way to get to those other rooms then. Not from where you're at right here. No. Okay. It's always all the right. Death well, it looks room. like portal it is then. Portal it is. All right, we go through okay. portal into cavern. Ladies right. first. Portal. Say the fox. Tooth. Nobody ever likes the death room. <laughs> Alright, hold on. I gotta find that page in the book. You guys How far are... away is the, wow. was the death room entrance from where we're at? Uh, how, like, it's back down the hallway. I don't know, 80 feet or something? That's too far. <laughs> oh, Pop Art, always trying to inject a little more chaos into our lives. Hey... Just life. Life is chaos. All right. The floor of this 50 foot high cavern is strewn with the remnants of a dozen gargoyles. Ah. A ramp hugs the south wall and climbs to a 20 foot high ledge. A stone arch is embedded in the wall. Uh, on the oh no, sorry, you exit from the stone arch embedded in the wall on the west side of the ledge. Okay. Uh... So basically, um, from the west side of so you're you're in this giant kind of diagonal chasm, fifty feet tall. They, let's call it one hundred fifty feet from the southwest to the northeast. It looks like a raisin, you know, all shriveled and weird. You can go down this ramp, which takes you to the the base, and then there's a passageway that leaves to the uh, northwest, out of the kind of the middle of the raisin. Okay. Well, I guess we, uh, we try that. All right. Uh, let's see. All right, this is a, a very large room, so let me see if I can describe this thing out. It's about 80 feet across, 80 feet north-south, 80 feet east-west. There's a passage that goes out of the south, a passage that goes out of the northwest, and a passage that goes out of the northeast. You're entering from basically the west side. And... <clears throat> There are two stone golems carved to resemble that wizard statue that you had seen, you know, way back when you first entered. Uh, they are standing next to two giant columns of rock that are supporting the 20 foot high ceiling of this otherwise empty cave. Uh -huh. These two columns of rock, are they in, like, center of room? Uh, more or less, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, me going to try to go out northwest door. All right. Northwest as you begin door. to cross, as you begin to cross the room, the stone golems hold up their hands in an outstretched fashion, you know, like, stop. Uh, me stop. They square themselves off and take a step towards you. They don't appear to be speaking. Okay. Kind of confrontational. Uh, we did do what they wanted. Me take step back. Okay. As you begin to back up, you get closer and closer to that exit, and when you get right near to where you came in, they go back to the columns where they, that they were standing next to. Well, that seems a little unfair and excessive. All right. Uh, we attempt to go down South Passage to see if they do the same thing. 
All right. As you have to enter the room uh, to go down towards the south passage, as you take a couple steps in, and they immediately begin walking towards you. And they appear to be like they're going to meet you about halfway. All right. Well, then meet back back up again. As as do they. Okay. Hey, a, a Grimmel. What? You want to try flying and see if they notice flying creatures? Sure. Why not? Well, Poplar flies all the time anyways. Won't they have noticed him? Poplar's just sitting in the back munching on a sweet roll. Uh-uh. Uh, Poplar, would you please, would you, not could you, would you fly... You know, like you're going fly towards one of those passages to see if the golems notice you. Sure, Barry, because you said please. How high are you off the ground? Are you going to be up like near the ceiling? Or are you going to just go like very head height? Uh, probably about, uh, I'd say, five or ten feet from the ceiling. How, how high is the ceiling again? Twenty feet. Yeah, so he's about 10 feet up in the air, let's say 10 to 15 feet, kind of bobbing a little bit. All right, you're up pretty high. You go flying through, and it's 15 feet. Yeah, you are you seem fine. You were able to fly. Which passage are you going towards? Same direction we were just heading. So south? Yeah. All right, so you go towards the southern passage, and you appear to be able to make it flying this high. Yeah. The pop light just goes down, turns around, comes back, and gives a thumbs up. Okay. All right. Uh, me going to try uh, crawling, see if the golems notice me. All right. Uh, do you want to, like, roll for stealth? Sure, because I'm sure I'm stealthy. Let me see what my... Oh, oh actually, I, mean... I have a plus two to stealth? That seems... That makes no sense. What's your negative modifiers from your armor? Oh, I have no idea. It doesn't matter or anyway. I rolled a frickin' six, because of course I did. Um... I don't know how, where I would get negatives from armor. Uh, it's in the player's handbook, but don't worry about it. You basically you're like, I know, I know story. They told it great odyssey. Men got by giant by pretending to be sheep. You get down and start crawling. And you're like, bah, bah, and they, of course, see you and go to intercept. All right, me get back up. Me go back towards where we were. <laughs> Right on. Uh, Poplar just shouts from the distance. You can do it, baby. I'm just gonna fly over and join Poplar. <laughs> hey, uh, Foxglove. Can you do you do? You, can you do fireball or something like that? I can do flame strike, but that's not really a projectile. That's a fireball for uh, for nerds. Fire. Oh, uh, hey, Grimmel. I know what you can do. What? Uh, go, uh, Earthquake tap those two, two golems. I could. Oh, that sounds kind of dangerous, Barry. Well, she's only Earthquake... Or she's only tapping the golem. Earthquake. She's not actually tapping the cavern. Sorry, heat. Well, <sighs> but like, it's why not just kill them right? any other way then? Because they made of stone. Uh, the sword would probably not work on them so well. You might be able to basically one-shot them. But how am I supposed to get both at the same time? Well, no, you basically you fly up, you land straight down on one of their heads. You know, earthquake that thing, and then fly back up, and then do the second one. Pretty sure it's only a one and done thing. Yeah. Oh, it's only one and done thing. Pretty sure. 
Yeah, he just he, willy he nilly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Willy nilly, well. quakey wakey. Yeah, the only multi strike thing I think that Grimmel can do is the Eldritch Blast. Yeah. All right. Well, you can take one of the golems out that way. I guess. Yeah. I'll Actually, I think you could blast both of them if you roll to hit on both of them. Because don't you fire like three bolts? For Eldritch Blast, yeah. Yeah. So you could, yeah, we'll roll to hit. If you want to use that, I'd have you roll to hit one. And then if you hit, then we could roll to hit the second. So you can see if you could hit both of them that way. All right. I'll s fly over like a strike first. I even make uh, grinding noises like Neow! as I just kind of soar in. Now Eldritch Blast from the sky. I don't know Let's... why, but I'm imagining when Grimmel Eldritch Blasts, he just opens his beak and goes like a kaiju. You pew. Pew. Oh, that's a nat 20 to hit one of them. Oh, heck yeah. Plus nine. So, jeez, yeah, that hits. And the other one's a twenty-one. That also hits. And the third shot is only fourteen. Well, that's fine. You hit each one with those first two. Um, Let me roll wow. damage. Uh, actually, what I need is uh, you to roll me a one d twenty twice. A 15 and a 10. Okay. So. Hmm. How is that going to happen? So the first one. Um, eh, hmm. The first one doubles over and you see mercury start pouring out of its mouth and nose and it just kind of starts like like looks like it's choking as it's falling to the ground and oh, just pounds of liquid metal start pouring out of it and the other one you hear a grinding sound as it's trying to move and can't and all of a sudden there's like puffs of powder that start coming out of it like out of its nose and mouth and all of a sudden as it's going to the ground and it starts like hacking and coughing and a bunch of acorns fall to the ground in front of it Ow. Oh, look, they have babies. I don't think stones have acorn babies, Poplart. Shows what you know. I mean, I guess you're right. Mm -hmm. So they are currently incapacitated. Okay. Uh, well, they incapacitated. Uh, do me going to say, come on, Slav, and then uh, me going to make a dash for uh, Southern Passage where Poplar Art is. Awesome. Okay, uh, you make it down there. I'm assuming just Foxglove follows along. Yep. Yeah. Got right. nothing Mark better to do. Cool. Say what? Well, this. He said nothing better to do. <laughs> okay, so I guess we make it. Yes, you make it through. Imagine as Grimmel's flying back, he's just humming. Very nice. All right. You make it through what looks like a winding lava tube about 10 feet wide that takes you for a while going to the southwest and then it curves around and faces in the northwest and you see a incredibly long cavern laid out before you 
stretches far to the north and far to the south with little enclaves and uh, archways leading off in off multiple sides in different directions but inside you see first the well first off the cavern has walls that slope inward and they form a 30 foot high peak there are from your count as you're looking around the room of a half dozen gargoyles clinging to ledges 20 feet up the walls like three on the north and three on the south end and there are uh, two stone golems also carved like that wizard that stand watch on the f on the cavern floor uh, one of them is kind of just to your north looking down across the column er, across the entire area and the other one is way down at the south looking up to the north okay so where we are are we on cavern floor or are we above cavern floor you're you're on the cavern floor but you haven't quite entered that area yet you can tell that if you were to like continue in another say 10 feet that you would be within the visual range of that golem okay Well, uh, Grimmel? What? You want to Eldritch Blast this golem since it worked so well last time? <sighs> I'll, like, rev up my wings and, like, a per small, you can hear kind of like a propeller type noise as I take to the skies again. <laughs> <laughs> It's just Grimo making the noise with the mouth. Yes. <laughs> As the Eldritch Blast comes out. Yeah. It looks all ripply for some reason. <laughs> Before each blast, it. it goes pew! Uh, <laughs> comes out in a spattering of bursts like a battery. Uh, that's an 18 to hit. <laughs> that hits. Right. I only, might as well roll for all three. Oh, that's true. Then a uh, 22 to hit. Oh, yeah. Also hits. And a 17 to hit. That one does not hit. Oh. That's... Yeah. That's 11 force damage. All right. You'd cause the 11 force damage and roll me a 1d20 real quick. You get three. Three. Uh, the golem gets blasted by this blast and then kind of tips forward, tips back, and it lands on its back on the ground and from its mouth crawls out a homunculus, which looks around the chamber, and then takes off running to the west. All right. Okay. I have fun storming the castle. <laughs> uh, me look around. Wait, where? Where is Miracle Max? All right, so uh, me then step onto cavern floor and look around. All right, well, you see uh, what I was talking about with the gargoyles and stuff. You are aware that way down at the far end of the cavern is another golem, uh, though it doesn't appear to notice you this far away. But you can see as you look down, there is a passage that goes off to the... Uh, you know, the southwest just past him. There's another one to the southeast. In the middle of this chamber, there's a passage to the east and to the west. And across from you, 
There's one that goes out on the northwest side. So did we come in the north of the chamber then? You came on the northeast corner of it. Okay, northeast. All right. You said there's east and then west and then the last one comes out where? Basically, basically there's six holes total. There's six passages going off the room. Think of it like a, an insect, you know, with the legs going off. You came in the upper right one and then there's the other five. And the last one's going out to northwest. Yeah, so you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I've got something drawn to, you know, kind of help me along with this. And when I drew it, it looks a lot like Plankton from SpongeBob SquarePants. I've never seen the show. Oh, no, uncultured. Yeah, uh, you're you're actually very lucky. It it uh... oh yeah go ahead. I was gonna say it was. I do know it's one of those shows that they've actually proven it makes you dumber as you watch it. It pretty much does. Yes. Oh, it's been scientifically proven. Has it really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, luckily, it didn't do my family too much lasting damage. Because most of my kids grew up watching SpongeBob. I think could have educated them. them properly with classics like Ren and Stimpy and Rocco's Modern Life that teaches you yeah. that a hardworking wallaby can become a, a phone sex line worker to support his dog. Uh, and no. Jack Henry and Hobby. No, those those yeah. are all before the kids' time, especially Ren and Stimpy. Besides, Ren and Stimpy is not a kid show. No, we grew oh, up on the shows that versions. terrified you, like Courage the Cowardly Dog. <laughs> you weren't supposed to watch that one either. Boo, we watched it anyways, behind your backs. <laughs> oh no. The travesty. It really was. I love Courage the Cowardly Dog. It was great. Anyway. That and Invader Zim. Both nightmare fuel. <laughs> Great. Anyway. You... Anyway, yes, never mind. Before we get before we get sidetracked here. <laughs> anyway, so okay. you continue. Uh the which wait, which passage were you taking? You said there's all, all around this room there's like archways and stuff, right? Yes, there are. Uh me going to check out archways first. Well, the one to like give me a direction. One of the directions you're going through. Um, so is it just one archway is like a passageway then? Yeah. Each one's a passage oh. going off. Oh, okay. I was, for some reason in my mind, I had pictured like hundreds of archways. Like this was some kind of uh, ancient dwarven undercity or something. Where... No, no, no. More just th lava tubes. Big lava okay. tubes. Got it, got it, got it. All right, well, then I think we'll just kind of skip right across and try the Northwest Passage. All right, you go in and kind of work your way around, and then uh, you reach a point where it T-junctions, and you can either continue, go to the Northwest, or you can turn and go towards the Northeast. Northwest. Northeast. All right, uh, I guess me keep going northwest all right as you continue you find that this passage uh narrows and there's a couple of little areas only about oh maybe two feet wide that continue that direction but the main chamber turns and heads to the south mm. i'm assuming you want to keep going towards the main chamber uh yes all right so as you follow the main chamber down, it takes you to a round, a kind of a roundish room that you enter. It The room is to your northeast. You're kind of walking into the south uh, west corner of it. And the passageway either continues past the room or turns and goes further to the southwest, but the room itself, where is it, is a 12 foot high cave, and there are, oh, there are six Druger in it, three males and three females. 
Six Hudo Wada. Are... Druger. Uh, are these the, the deep dwarves? Or are they the Nord undead? Uh, I don't remember. D D the Druger is undead. Druger? Is it D-U-E-R-G-A-R? Yeah, they're the dwarves. Yeah, they're the, the dwarves. deep dwarves. Okay, three deep dwarves. Got it. Yeah, well, six of them total. Looks like three males and three females, but you know, dwarves, they all have beards. It's hard to tell. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so they're in there. They're having a conversation in their deep speech as you come walking in and you kind of catch their attention and they're all shocked for a moment. What, is it something on my face? Uh, does anybody speak Dwarvish? I do, actually. <laughs> Can you just wave at them and say hello? Ah, uh, sure. Uh, now, Deep Dwarven is different than Surface Dwarven, so you might have some similar roots, but, you know, it's definitely not going to be the same. You know, like someone who speaks Portuguese trying to speak to someone who speaks Italian. Right, okay. Well, I guess we can. I can wave at them and say in common, hello. You, after a moment, they're, they're shocked, and then you kind of hear this... Ugh. And everyone else kind of like looks grossed out as they look over at you. Uh, can you speak common? Yeah, I can, but it's gross. Okay. All right. Because we are dumb and simple minded, can you bear speaking it for just a little bit? <clears throat> I guess, you inferior whatever you are. I'll go to town with you right now. <laughs> really? Which town? <laughs> That's what happens when you speak metaphors in front of pop art. <laughs> I thought we were trying to get out of here at some point, but you know the way out? That's perfect. Beat downtown. <laughs> Oh, where was that at? Like, is that one of the names of the places we were at? This is uh, a weird no, name. No, Poplar, this is what Grimmel says when uh, he's about ready to, to kick someone right in the balls. Wouldn't that hurt his foot? I mean, there's probably all stone balls around here. No, well, Grimmel can also turn to stone, so I think he probably managed to hurt whoever he kicks. Ah, that's what football is I've been hearing about. Interesting. Yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, Poplar, you give me splitting headaches sometimes. Oh, you should probably get that looked at. I don't want an infection. Uh, no, I think you're kind of the disease on this one. Oh, Disease of love? <laughs> No, Poplart. Oh, that's good. I heard those love diseases are pretty contagious and very dangerous. You should really be uh, careful. Me immune to disease, Poplart. You actually got vaccines? Wow. I heard that they can give you, like, tracking stones injected into your bloodstream so the mages can know where you're at at all times. Uh, no poplar. Uh... <laughs> I heard that the illness was a big sham all along, and that the vaccines are just a way to control our freedoms. Oh, that does make sense. Oh yes, that's right. Lot. I forgot we were talking about fables today. <laughs> <laughs> they had to put sending stone necklaces on all the birds. <laughs> Well, naturally, how are you going to keep track of your, you know, automatons otherwise? Everyone knows bo birds aren't real. Oh, exactly. Like, that... like my favorite bardic play, Automaton Constable. <laughs> it's 
an automatic <laughs> hit. <laughs> but um, crash. <laughs> so anyway, these, these Druger here, they they look very grossed out by even having to interact with you guys. All right, I'm just waiting to make sure everyone's done with their conversations. All right, well, they're all like, look at you, and they're just like, ugh. But put them down. Let's be nice to them. And you see all six of them kind of take a step forward towards you, and as they do, they double in size, becoming, you know, well, I guess basically your height. Oh, hey, Grimmel, it looks like your uh, your wishes come true and you can take them to Pound Town now. Mm -hmm. With pleasure. They are all now taller than Grimmel, by the way. That's fine by me. Uh, is... Grimmel, do you want to, like, cast while they're over there and we're over here? Do you want to cast, like, Arms of Hadar at them or or what? Elders I mean, last arms three are of them? Or, Grimmel. or so what about you, that. Foxglove? Did you want to cast a some kind of a spell at them while they're over there and we're here? Any spell you would prefer, oh great leader one. Well, I don't know. You usually want to cast spells, but we're usually kind of in melee range, and then you're always disappointed. Yeah, I guess. I can cast clap daggers at him. Well, there you go. Alright. I can actually probably cast it at a higher level. I'm gonna cast it at a level. I'll cast it at a level three, why not? Alright. Okay. So, let me roll the dice. Um, 25. Oh, that's very successful. Alright, and then damage is... What's the radius on that? It is a 5 foot cube. Oh, just a 5 foot cube? Okay, so you're only gonna hit, like, what, 2 or 3 of them? Yeah. But it stays there. So if anybody enters that turn or... If anybody enters the area of the Cloud of Daggers, or if anybody starts their turn in the Cloud of Daggers, they take more damage. Alright, well I'll say you do it kind of in the front and diagonally, and that way you hit... Uh, roll me a 1d6 real quick. One. <laughs> okay, so... Um... We'll say you hit two of them successfully, and then if there's an, uh, you know, if any of them move into that area, they'll also get hit. Cool. That's 18 damage for everything that steps into that area or starts its turn in that area. All right. So two of them will just put down immediately, take 18 damage. And so you're starting that out. And then everyone else, I'd say we should roll initiative. Oh, me actually roll well for once. Yeah, Grimmel not one's on that. Uh, me get 21. Nice. I played only got nine, even with his modifiers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> cool. Uh, let me... Should I real quick roll for my other guys? Ah. Helps if I can actually hit the buttons right. Okay, well, Barry, then that means you go next. All right, so we have two of them actually kind of in. So is the Cloud of Daggers kind of in the front? I'm assuming they're kind of three by three, or how are they? How are they standing? Well, I was and I was kind of thinking they were starting out first as a group, and then they. Um, you know, kind of moved towards you. So 
Let's let me draw something on my paper here just to make sure I get them. So let's say uh, Foxglove hit the front two, and the other four are like behind. Okay. Um. So you could go around. There's enough space in the cavern. You could go around to the cloud of daggers, and hit the ones on the left or the right behind or probably reach your weapon through and hit them but then there's risk always of course of getting sucked in yeah me not gonna do that that just doesn't seem tactically sound um yeah so yeah me gonna me gonna run around uh, the cloud and um the attack See here, I'm going to go around the right and attack the one, uh, you know, kind of in front, nearest to me. Yep, uh, but around the right side. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then... You're going to take a Mighty Swing with Sword of Freya. Cool. Yeah, that is a... 23 to hit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. slam right into that guy. Uh, that is uh, 17 slashing damage. Ouch. Yeah, that, that one hurt. <laughs> All right. Uh, me going to rear back and hit him again with Sword of Freya. Awesome. Um, that is 24 to hit. Sweet. That definitely hits. Um, and that is... That is only 11 slashing damage. That is still enough to kill him. Got it. Alright, that is one down. Yep. Alright. Well, now, let's see. The first one inside of the... A uh, cloud of daggers begins his turn. So does he take that damage again, or does he take it the first time? Uh, cloud of daggers is. So he already took it once. Is he gonna take that again? A creature takes slashing damage when it enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there. So it sounds like he takes it again. Yep. So he's dead. Uh, so basically, you... go ahead. Oh, I'm guessing that basically means what? Three of them are dead right away? Basically, yes. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, which leaves uh, the one that's across from you to charge over, and he is going to attempt to hit you with his war pick. Okay. Which is a 19 to hit. Uh, my armor class is 19. So it does not hit. Okay. I, was, I thought Ty went to the defender. It does. So that's okay. why you, you, you get it. He he scrapes off your armor, screams, comes back for one more attempt, and misses completely. Okay. Which takes us to Poplar. Poplar doesn't really have any room to hide or anything, so his only option is just to try and pop off a shot. All right. And uh, can I just say that's a miss? It's really embarrassing. Yes. <laughs> it's like a 12 to hit. I am rolling yeah, uh, like crap tonight. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Um, so the there's two more left there. They're closest to Barry, so they're both going to go for him. Uh, the first guy completely misses everything. Yeah. And the second guy gets a dirty 20 to hit. That on his hits. second attempt. He finally did something. All right. He is going to. What is that? Oh, he doesn't. Jeez, these guys are weak. They really should not have attacked you. Um, <laughs> So he, he hits for almost his maximum, it feels like. He hits for 11 piercing damage. Okay. Yeah. 
So slams that one into you, and uh, it's Gremel. All right. Um, I don't feel like wasting spell slots on these guys, so. Eldritch Blast. Yeah, because I feel like torturing them. I'm gonna pick one. Doesn't really matter, and cast Infestation. <laughs> okay. Isn't that waste like... a spell slot? No, that's a cantrip. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. It just makes them believe that they're covered in some kind of pest. Got it. Awesome. Well, roll the hit. That is only a 12, actually. Ah, so it does not work. Nope. Is right. I like it, though. You should try that the next time time around. That was hilarious. All right. Uh, oh, oh, it's Foxglove's oh, turn. Foxglove, yep. All right. Another spell, or should I just start stabbing? Or vicious mockery. Or vicious mockery. What's the closest thing to me? And what does it look like? Well, they're both uh, pretty far on the other side, because they both went for Barry, and they look like uh, tall, pale dwarves. Alright. <clears throat> I'm going to pick one of them and vicious mockery away. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh my lord. You know, leg day was so last month. Like, and also, why would you even bother on leg day? Your legs are so stumpy and small. <laughs> That's not attractive. Also, where's all your hair at? It's all on your chin and none of it is on your head. No girl likes that. I don't want to be, you know, have some dude have sleeping with me and I look down and see my own reflection in his head, okay? That's not hot. That's not attractive. Yeah, uh, If that's the case, I would just do it in front of a mirror. But I don't want to do that. You're just, you're just something nobody asked for. Nobody asked for you. Not even your mom. Nobody asked for you. Your dad left because you were born, okay? <laughs> like, nobody asked for you. Uh, 22. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that hits and... You get you get the the sadness compounded by you actually were insulting all of that to one of the females, so it made it even that much worse. <laughs> uh, seven damage. <laughs> all right, Barry, go ahead. Oh my goodness! All right, uh, me going to pick dwarf that actually hit me, and me going to. Uh... Let's see, me actually... Yeah, me going to use a smearing... Searing... Sm when I hit this thing. <laughs> yeah, smearing smite. I was smite. just imagining smearing smite. <laughs> it just spread the like marmalade. This is love. <laughs> I was thinking more like a PR smear campaign. Oh, jeez. All right, all right. So me rolling. Um, that is, oh, okay, right. dirty twenty to hit. All right, well you hit it. Okay. All right. Um, back. Look at my thing. One d six. Start of each of its turns until spell ends. Okay. All right. So it's going to take. Fourteen slashing damage. How much? Can you say that again? Fourteen. Okay, fourteen slashing damage it is. And three fire damage. Dang. And on its turn, it has to make a, a constitution save. And if it doesn't, it takes another... Uh, 1d6 fire damage well can, that's the one well in that case since your turn is done I assume but uh, no I have I have another no. strike oh, you have another strike gotcha all right well I'm just gonna let you know that that one's gonna die at the beginning of its turn I went ahead and rolled the d6 so you oh, put it on well, ice okay it failed its constitution save if it, it, it failed its constitution save so okay. you smear off iced it 
Well, me turning to next dwarf that took a that dared to take a swing at me, and me also going to uh, swing at it with Freya. Awesome. No. And that's definitely going to hit. That is a uh, 20, 30. That is 30 to hit. Damn. All right. And that is another 14 slashing damage. That one is injured. Yes. Okay. So, cool. Now we are down to two. Yep. So we go to Poplar. No, Poplar can't do much else other than try and do a shot again. So confirm. Oh, it's a 22 to hit. Oh, that one hits. Hey! Oh, for a whopping six damage at the injured. Burger. Burger. Well, we could say you shot the one that uh, Barry just hit, and you basically knock him to the ground as he's gasping for breath. Like you shot. That him sounds like a good plan. Makes okay. me feel more effective. All right, you shot him in the throat, and he's like gasping for breath. Uh, so he's gonna be down and not doing anything this round. He tries and to right himself and just can't, uh, which then the next one, I guess, takes his shots at Barry real quick. And... Oh, wow! He actually had a 22 to hit. Jeez. Oh, that, that hits. That was a good roll. Can't believe it. <laughs> um, all right. He's going to put all he can into it. Oh, and does a whole eight damage. Oh, eight's eight. I know, but geez. <laughs> Which takes us to Grimmel. Cool. Can I just go up and punch one of them? I don't care anymore. Well, there's only one left. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I mean, gonna... You could try your pest, your pest thing on it. Nah, I'm over it. It just sounded like it'd be so much fun. It would be. But I'm over it now. I'm just gonna fly up and like just punch feather, him across the face things. as hard as I can. All right. Oh. Do I roll strength? No, well, that's it, a regular yeah. attack, but it's like an unarmed attack. Yep. So you roll for roll to attack first. Dang it! I've not been rolling well at all. Yeah, that's only a three. <laughs> Yeah, that, you, you go to hit, and you you miss completely. No one's been rolling. Yeah, you were getting cocky. Well, I... What is a three gonna do anywhere else, Barry? <laughs> At least you'd have your... your uh... I rolled a three last time! <laughs> yeah, good point. Alright. I'm more imagining that Emil did hit, but... Uh, decided instead of using the claws, use the feathered wings. So it is kind of like feather slapping against armor. <laughs> caressed, caressed his ball head, his bald head lovingly. You hear a oh, that was pleasant. Grimmel <laughs> actually gave him one hit point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the king got a my never, neck. Never thought I'd experience a pleasant pheasant. All right, anyway, I'm guessing it's Foxglove's turn now. Oh, yes, totally. How far is the is, is the closest one to me? There's only one like, left. I think there's only one left. And they're all, I mean, let's say, like, 20 feet at the most. And it's, like, from you to the group, which is Barry, Gremmel, and the Drieger. Yeah, you can actually probably run up and stab it, no problem, if you wanted to. Cool. I'll run up and stab it in the face. Awesome. I'll use my evil rapier, because why not? Yeah. And that's only an 8 to hit. <laughs> that does not hit. Yeah, I figured. I'll go sulk in the corner. <laughs> right on. Well, it goes to Barry, then. Alright. Uh, me going to take swing at this with Sword of Freya. Oh, uh, that might be a miss. That's only 14 to hit. 
That is a miss. All right. Well, luckily, me have second swing. Uh, me going to swing again. Uh, that is 20 to hit. Oh, yeah, that hits. And that is uh, 13 slashing damage. All right. Cool. Poplar, do you want to take a shot at it? All right. One for the road to see if it'll actually hit. That's uh, 18 to hit. Oh, yeah. You hit. I do? Yes. Oh, gosh. That's surprising. And I actually did some damage. 10 damage. And you kill it. Ha <laughs> ha! Nice shot, Poplart. Hey, what what about the guy still gasping for breath on the ground? We, yeah, uh, he's like twitching in his death throes if someone wants to go take care of him. Yeah, I kind of feel bad for that guy. Like, maybe we should do a little, you know, stabby stabby. I don't want to do it. He can suffer for all I care. All right. Uh, well, that's fine. Uh, uh, me can take a, a swing at his head with a sword. Okay. You, you, I, I'm gonna give it to you. You, you just like. All right, I'm gonna just go hit him. All right. Me, uh, me, mercy, kill him, and you know, split bald Peyton Twain. And just for fun, as the the head splits and rolls, it it does that cinematic roll to the side where. Uh, Foxglove can see a reflection in it. <laughs> Foxglove, do you do you look at it and kind of pat your head and be or pat your hair and be like, hey, I I, I actually look pretty good right now. <laughs> nah, it feels kind of morbid using your own bald heads as a mirror, which seems kind of on brand for you. Morbid. Okay, <laughs> maybe she just kills people by bullying them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> maybe Grimmel looks in his head and preens himself. Would I will? <laughs> he just kind of. Oh well, it looks like these feathers here are out of place. I'm just going to kind of yeah, quick get them in order. Uh, who who didn't tell me that I had food on my face this entire time? <laughs> my God, <laughs> I was talking all that trash. No wonder I was off my game. Do you ever think how D and D is the perfect anti-bullying campaign because it teaches you that words can hurt? <laughs> I just like to think that we're such a charismatic party and we're so chaotic that we just use the dead enemies, their bald heads, to you know make sure we look good so that we can kill more people with our charisma. <laughs> I mean, oh if you want to, I can, like, scalp it for you. <laughs> no, I'm good. No, I'm good. It's kind of more of a one-use type thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. I mean, up is on the table. After a while, the skin dulls and it loses its shine. Yeah. That's why you tan it. <laughs> nah, that's what we got actual mirrors for. Well, anyway, so as this began, I was saying, there is the passage which you could continue from here to the southeast, or you could go to the southwest. Um, uh, well... Yes, probably southwest. All right. As you make your way down to the southwest, you find that it opens up into a 20-foot high cavern that extends almost 200 feet from the northwest to the southeast. There's a multitude of passageways that lead off to the north from the northwest side to the due south from the south side and there's two separate ones that lead off to the east south of where you enter the chamber uh, 
The 20-foot high cavern resembles a tooth-filled maw because of its numerous stalactites and stalagmites. Their rock formations are so plentiful that it's a little cumbersome for you to get through, Barry, just so you don't run into the stones themselves. Ah, great. Okay, so you have two passages going east, and then what else do we have? You have uh, one up to the north that you can work your way to, and another one down to the south. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, let's try to keep going south. Mm. It takes you a while, but you work your way down into the southern chamber, which you enter kind of like you're entering the stem of a capital T. So it's a, a it opens up kind of to the east and the west. There's a kind of a large flattened open area. The floor is. Uh, Sorry, make sure I get to the right section. The floor is kind of a packed earth, and there are niches carved into the walls of this damp 20-foot high cavern. Uh, you see hundreds of moldy skulls, a mix of dwarf and druger, uh, and a few fallen out of their niches rest on the floor. There's a small chamber as you look to the east that contains a chipped up stone altar with treasure piled around it. The wall behind the altar is painted with a faded mural and an, alco an alcove to the west features a central stalagmite and stalactite each eight feet tall and covered with soot drawings of snakes and scorpions. Oh, lovely motif. Say eight feet tall, like I'm supposed to be impressed or something. All right. Well, uh, me going to go towards altar. Okay. Uh, but uh, me going to before me actually step into that chamber. Uh, me going to investigate to see if maybe there's some kind of a if something looks suspicious or not, like a trap or something. Okay. Do do a roll to search for traps. Is there actually a specific roll to search for traps? No, it's just investigate. Oh, okay. Uh, Twelve. Uh, you look around and you don't find anything. There doesn't appear to be any like trip wires, fake plates on the floor, or anything like that. Okay. Uh, so me going to head across chamber, kind of. Skirt around altar and see what fitted mural looks like. It's hard to tell. You know, it's it's pretty kind of worn down, but it looks like uh, maybe like a priest of some kind. You know, leading a congregation. Okay. Uh, what kind of treasure is heaped on altar? Um, let's see. Let's see. The wall behind that is a shadowy figure creating a Sorry, I need to find that. Um, 5,000 copper pieces, 2,300 silver pieces, 470 gold pieces, five flawed diamonds, and an Electrum teapot. Uh, oh, a rusty warm hammer is also found among the valuables. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what's in the pile. All right. Uh, me going to attempt to do Arcana check on Rusty Warhammer. Okay. My opinion, the teapot's the most suspicious. Uh, that is only a three for Arcana. Yeah, you you sense nothing. Okay. Um. Uh, hey, Poplart, look over here. Shays. Poplart goes straight to the teapot. Of course he does. I'll think about okay. it. 
surrounded by all this gold, some weapons, things that obviously seem very valuable to the average person. But why the teapot? See? It's the only thing that really stands out. Therefore, it must be special. So okay. You take the teapot. Of course. All right. As you grab the teapot and begin to covet it, the altar begins to move and shake, and the top gets flipped off back towards the wall, and out of the center rises a gilded mummy fully wrapped. And that is where we end tonight. See, oh, told you teapots were special. <laughs> I, I think you just triggered something there, Poplart. Yeah, triggered awesomeness. Actually, you know, it's it's really interesting that you said Electrum, uh, because I learned what Electrum actually is. It's kind of interesting. It is. Oh. It is just. It's an ally of. It's an alloy of gold and silver. Oh, right on. So yeah, before before they knew or before they were able to extract, you know, separate gold and silver, because oftentimes, you know, gold and silver were, you know, those ores will occur in the same spot. Yeah. So uh, before you know they learned how to separate you know, the gold and the silver, you know, they had electrum. Must have been one of those super valuable old minerals like aluminum. Yeah. Aluminium. It was. Yeah, yeah. They, it was a time that was more valuable than even gold and platinum. Yep. Yeah, because it was so hard to extract, even though it's one of the most common elements in the Earth's crust. Yep. I heard this story somewhere of some guy that like took all of his silverware. You know, he he got rid of all his actual real silver silverware, and he was some rich dude. And then he made, you know, he got it all, the whole th set done in aluminum. That would be that would be Napoleon the Third of France. Oh, oh yep. okay. Fa father of the modern world, really. Huh. Yeah. So not he not Napoleon a... Bonaparte, but Napoleon the nope. Third. Yes, yeah. his grandson. And there's a hilarious story about a failed coup and all sorts of other stuff that goes on to his life. There's an entire uh, behind the bastards episode about him that I highly recommend. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, so that's kind of, yeah, that's really interesting because, you know, now that whole set is just basically worthless. Well, other than the historical value of it being owned by one of the most powerful men in France. Well, yes, other than the provenance. <laughs> but... Anyway, but anyway. Yeah, I need to I get going was... sooner uh, because it's, you know, we had a it's Christmas Day here for the orthodoxy ah yes oh. the original calendar people the Julians mm -hmm. not the stupid Gregories which by the way no happy is... Newton miss oh what's Newton miss well December 25th and the Ju Julian calendar or Christmas day was when Sir Isaac Newton was born Mm -hmm. Or January seventh. Oh, okay. Yep. On the you know, the Gregory followers. This has been an Azentuary LLC production. Find us online at A-Z-E-N-T-U-A-R-Y dot com for character bios, merchandise, Patreon, and more. Thank you for listening.